All right. What follows is probably the craziest love story that you've ever heard. So this episode is not directly about fitness. Instead, it's about me and my fiance, how we met, how we became parents, how we moved to Brazil and eventually to Switzerland, the obstacles we faced and just about our crazy journey that we've been on. Now, I got inspired to do this podcast because currently I'm writing a book. Yes, you've heard it right. I'm writing a book. I'm very pumped about this. And part of this book is obviously my story. Now, what I want to achieve by doing this episode here, um, first and foremost, I never really talked about our love story in such detail. It's the first time I do that. And what I want is that I hopefully can inspire couples who go through a difficult time or couples who do like a long, who have a long distance relationship, give them hope and inspire them to start to, to just keep going and uh, work for their love. Okay. So it might be a long episode here because our journey, although only five years long, has like a lot of content. So I, I really try to shorten everything and sum it up. I even made some notes for me as a <laughs> reminder, because yeah, some things are, are quite complex. But for now, sit back, listen up, and let's get started. Our love story started in Australia. I was there to study English. Gabriela was there to study as well. She also worked there. And the story I like to tell how we met is at the gym. So I tell normally my family members and my friends that we would run into each other in the gym, exchange numbers and so forth, which is not reality, which is not the truth. The truth is that we met on through the internet on Tinder, okay, as it is very normal in today's world, I think. We met on Tinder and uh, yeah, we had good discussions. I asked her out, she gave me a hard time and basically said, no, 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 at least at first. And then on the very last day before I left Australia, she agreed on meeting me, all right? On the very last day, very last evening. Now, see, she was very strategic when it comes to picking a place. She picked a bar where also her friends were. So, in case I show up and I'm a total faggot, then she would have an excuse to leave me. Because, as I said, her friends were there. Luckily, this was not the case. She didn't need it. She didn't need this excuse. We had a good time. We got along. We laughed a lot. And I'm not going into details, but she woke up uh, right next to me at the Scarborough beach where I lived the next day. Now, as said, it was my last day, so um, I would fly. Actually, not home. I went to Bangkok, Thailand, and we just kept talking to each other through chat, through Skype. We updated each other on everything that's going on in our lives. I remember one time I even stood in my hotel just to chat with her, to see her through Skype, instead of exploring the nightlife in Bangkok. So Bangkok is, is super pretty crazy and so many things to do, but one night I stood at home and just wanted to chat with her. So I think this is the first sign that something is a bit crazy here. Something is going on. 
Um, I'm in Bangkok where so many things are going on and I would rather stay at home and Skype with Gabriela. All right. Now we talked about pretty much everything. We talked about our childhood, about our dreams, uh, about what we we would do, uh, like in in about our plans basically. And yeah, we we <laughs> got along so well that I said I have still a few weeks before I go back to work, so. I'm coming back. I am coming back from Bangkok to Australia to see you, to spend some time with you. That's what I did. I flew back to Perth and stood with her there for two weeks. She went to school. I just like, you know, enjoyed my vacation, went to the gym, did some, not a lot actually, cooked for her, waited uh, her to, to come home from school. Um, we worked out together. I even have a video on my YouTube channel. I think it's called Partner in Crime, something like that, from 2016. And we had a good time. We lived with, with, with each other for, for two weeks before I eventually would go back home to Switzerland this time. All right. I would go back to work in Switzerland. Gabriela would stay in Perth for a few more months and eventually go back to Brazil, to our family. Now, we kept chatting to each other and were in contact on a daily basis. Every single day, we would uh, send each other messages. And yeah, at the time we, we I still have protocols where we, we, we chat about we should move together, we should start a life together and whatnot. Obviously, this was just like, you know, this romantic dream. Um, but I still have some WhatsApp conversations in which we dis discuss moving together. Now, eventually, Gabriela would go back from Australia to Brazil. And on the way there, she decides to stop by in Switzerland and spend Christmas and New Year with me. This was then also the first time I introduced her to my family. Again, we literally, we've literally, so we've not seen each other for more than two weeks, but I already introduced her to my family as my girlfriend. So uh, again, that's pretty damn crazy if you ask me, but uh, that's what we did. Now, I was happy to introduce her to Snow. We, we, Traveled here with the Swiss Alps and uh, was was a funny time because obviously she wouldn't know snow, she wouldn't know how cold it can it can get, and she would borrow like a lot of clothes from my sisters. It was fun, had a good time. Then she flew back to Brazil, so it's me in Switzerland, back at work, daily life. She was back in Switzerland. Um, started her studies and we asked ourselves how the hell should our relationship work this way? I mean, we kept writing each other on a daily basis, tried to Skype each other as often as possible, but we've both had our own life basically. Yes, we dreamed together, we wrote each other um, about moving together and whatnot, but I mean, would you leave family and friends behind for someone you've seen only two weeks? Okay, in the meantime, it's now three weeks, three weeks we spent together. Would you do that? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, time went by. And um, as we both lived our own life, we decided at, at one point, I think it's not going to work, right? We agreed on that and say, okay, let's leave it at that. And um, yeah, dreams are dreams, but there is no way this can ever work. There's no freaking way. Um, 
even even though I was even having this this thought of moving to Brazil, I mean, what would I do there? I don't speak the language. I don't know anybody. Uh, also, economically, like Brazil is not really peaking. Now, yeah, we just left it at that. Kept talking to each other, but we said, okay, relationship, this is not going to work. Time went by, almost a year later, I took a vacation from work and I didn't really know what to do. All my friends would still study or work. Uh, and so I just randomly asked Gabriela whether she would be down to travel somewhere. Why not flying to Brazil and go to Rio? And very surprising, she was totally down. She was totally down that I would go there um, to Sao Paulo where she lives and we would go together to Rio, spend vacation there. So it's then the fourth week we would spend together. Uh, we would eat a lot of churrasco, we would go to the Christ the Redeemer. Uh, we worked out together a lot and, and we're just having a good time, right? I mean, uh, vacation and, and Brazil <laughs> must be good, must always or must be a good time. Our dreams obviously were more present again, living together, moving together, perhaps in Brazil, perhaps in, in Switzerland. But very soon it was back to daily life. Me back in Switzerland, she back in Sao Paulo, back to studies. And yeah, dreams, just to dreams, right? Now, three months later, we were still in contact. Now, I remember that she would go to a roller coaster park, to a theme park. And um, since we were still in contact, she told me that, that she doesn't feel well and that she's getting sick. You know, what comes next, right? Yeah. Somehow um, she didn't want to accept that. She said it's just like a flu. It's just like whatever, something that gets by. I always was, I already was a bit skeptical. Um, was not sure what was going on, but didn't really dare to ask. But eventually, as it kept going on and she didn't feel well and she started to throw up, yes, I eventually asked her, can you please do the test? Okay. And then I didn't hear anything back from her until I received the call. She was crying and um, she explained to me that the test was positive and that she just feels absolutely lost. For me, it was, um, I tried to calm her down, tried to stay calm myself, but as you can imagine, in my mind, in my head, like a thousand thoughts, all about what now, what are we going to do now? Martin, what have you done? How could this happen? Even how stupid are you? You know, me, age 25, having a, a good job, have feeling like free, um, have absolutely no responsibilities. Like I can like work out two hours a day. I can go on vacation whenever I want. I can literally do whatever I want. I have some financial resources. And now this, and now this, I'm becoming a father. How the hell will I do that? How the hell will I manage that? I mean, I felt like a child myself and never in my life had a thought of, of becoming a parent, never. 
of course, I remember now some conversations I had before with my friends um, about topics. Do you ever want to have kids? And for me, it was always mm, probably not, but we'll see when I'm old enough. But here's here it is. The situation is real. Okay. And the next few weeks were very, very tough for me. Very, very tough. I mean, how do I tell my parents what I'm going to do with work? How will I handle a baby? What are we going to do? Where are we going to settle? So many questions that we have no answers to. And then obviously, yeah, our, our mental health. I think just the pressure of, of like knowing that we would become parents and that we don't have like, I mean, she's, she's like five years younger than me. We, we, we feel like children ourselves and, and we have no experience uh, about, uh, about parenthood. And it was so scary. It was so scary. Okay. So what I did is, um, Obviously, I would tell my parents, would tell my good friends, also in, in tears. And they also couldn't give any advice. They also asked me, okay, you've got to deal with that now. Um, make sure that, you know, you do the right thing, whatever you do, we are here for you. But they didn't have the answer. They, they couldn't tell me what to do either because the situation, again, it's me in Switzerland, Gabriela in Brazil. I work here in Switzerland. She studies there. And now what? This was the, the main question. Now what? And for me, um, what I did, I started doing lists. So I wrote on a piece of paper, every possible scenario, what, what is feasible. I go to Brazil, pros and cons. I go, no, she comes to Switzerland, pros and cons. We move together to Portugal, pros and cons. And this list, I, I, I worked on, on those lists every single day for two weeks straight, tried to find the, the best solution, but as you can imagine, there will always be some kind of compromise, right? I mean, just the fact that our families live on different continents. I go to Brazil, my family, my family will not be able to see my baby. On the other side, Gabriela comes to Switzerland and her family doesn't have anything from our baby either, so it's difficult. And then the language barrier, she doesn't speak German, I don't speak Portuguese. Um, Portugal would be an option because of the language, but then both bam families are, are like very far away. So yeah, this was a, like a very, very hard decision that we had to make, right? As you know, I spent the past three years in Brazil and what made me move there is one, the weather for sure, the climate, right? It was the fact that, that I could do my job remotely, okay? And then also health related problems in Gabriela's family that didn't allow her to go away basically. Okay. So yeah, this uh, led to the decision. I'm going to Brazil. Good. This was clear. And now the preparations began. Everyone who ever emigrated knows this process is very, very difficult. It requires a lot of energy and time, a lot of paperwork. And it's like about the bank, it's about insurance, it's about visa. Um, 
like still figure out everything with with the employer how are we going to manage this yes i can do my work from wherever but there are still you know they have absolutely no control when i work from switzerland from from brazil and they're in switzerland zero control so how are we going to do that and um yeah there were just like a lot a lot of questions and a lot of things to organize. In August 2018, just a few weeks before Lara arrived, I flew to Brazil with four pieces of luggages. Um, I had all my belongings with me, told my friends and family goodbye. And I went to Sao Paulo where I got welcomed by Gabriela's family. At the time I did barely speak any Portuguese. So um, even at the airport, I was totally overwhelmed, totally overwhelmed. Unfortunately, English is not that common in Brazil, they literally speak Portuguese and not a lot more. And um, yeah, just imagine the situation. Okay, you are in a foreign country where you don't know the language. You don't know anybody else than one person, which was Gabriela, my girlfriend. You know that you will become a father. You have absolutely no clue about fatherhood, okay? You start thinking about how will you be able to provide? How will you be able to combine work, family, fitness, my side business? How will you communicate with people? How will you be able to connect with Gabriela's family? How will you, you know, I had to figure it out. There was no other way. There I was completely lost. I had to figure it out. Now, the time in San Francisco Campos, this is a little place in, in Sao Paulo. It was very turbulent, I'm not going to lie. Very, very chaotic from uh, you know, finding a co-working space to applying for a residence card, organizing a car to buying a stroller and clothes for the baby. All that we had to do within days, within days. And when I emigrated from Switzerland to Brazil, I didn't take a single day off. It was just like Saturday, Sunday, and as you can imagine, stress levels were through the roof. My, my, my schedule was packed. I would go to work, come back, um, go probably to the police, fill out forms, come back, help Gabriela. She's like pregnant, you know, she also is, is very demanding. And then, um, yeah, my, my gym performance business, my online coaching business, uh, learning Portuguese and, and then still doing something for my fitness, it was absolutely overwhelming. Okay, just want to speak it out. It was absolutely overwhelming, absolutely. It required energy, it required a lot of time. And as a matter of fact, the biggest challenge was yet to come, the baby, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah. Makes me smile when I think back because I literally, I literally cannot explain how I figured out everything. Um, it, it, it was so tricky. And even when it comes to buying a car, I mean, nobody can help me out. Um, Gabriela, who obviously is, is not able to do a, a lot of stu stuff, who just like stays in bed and rests. Um, me, who cannot speak Portuguese and the, the other Brazilians there who barely speak English. 
but I did it. I don't know how, I really don't know how um, I looked up a, a seller, contacted him, met him, paid him, got the car. I mean, to everyone, I, I tell the story. They always say, dude, you were so lucky that, that the car was functioning, that it was still going. Because, you know, me as, as a gringo, as a foreigner, they could do anything to you. Like, literally, you were just lucky that, that you're, you know, still good and the car is working. Anyway, another challenge was that uh, we were living at Gabriela's mom's house. Okay, so basically my mother-in-law's house. And uh, this wasn't easy either because there are so many cultural differences. And then, as I said before, the language barrier. So imagine you're at the breakfast table. Gabriela might be on uh, in the bathroom or, or something. You're at the breakfast table with your mother-in-law and you cannot speak a single sentence, not have a conversation with her. You literally point to, to the bread, to the bread occasion and say, <laughs> thumbs up, it's good. It was tough, it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> and um, yeah, you can laugh about it. I do it too. But it was tough, very, very uncomfortable, okay. But at the end, we were glad to, to have this possibility to live there just because, uh, yeah, support of the baby. As Gabriel and I had no idea what to do, basically. And then when it eventually was time, guys, I could literally record an entire podcast just about this, about the birth, about my experience in the hospital. Um, but this, yeah, no, I don't want to go into it. Um, I just, all, I, all I'm going to say is it's not the Swiss standards. It's not the Swiss reliability. It's not the Swiss cleanness. It was a mess, it was a mess, <laughs> but but it happened. Um, Lara was there, Lara was born, and we were over the moon, okay? Here I am in Brazil, still not knowing anyone, still not knowing the language, just bought a car, and now I'm having a baby. <laughs> Crazy, isn't that? Isn't it? I had no, no idea about parenting. I haven't read any books. Was never really interested. Was not into it. But here I am, and now the journey begins, right? So, basically, at this point, what we did, we moved together. This, what we were talking about for so long, this came true. Our dream came literally true. We had our family. I had an income. I could still work for the company in Switzerland. Plus I had the gym performance side hustle. Gabriela could stay close to her family. This was probably the, the biggest or the number one reason why we decided to move to Brazil. And uh, all this sounds awesome, right? Sounds good. Now, life is good in Brazil, okay? Life is good in Brazil also as a parent, but <laughs> as you can imagine, when you have a baby and have no clue about babies, and then also when you live with your girlfriend for the first time for longer than two weeks, it's a struggle, it's a challenge, it's uncomfortable, it's annoying, okay? There are many arguments. I mean, let's be honest, even when you move together with your girlfriend, the first months are tough. And now add a baby into the mix and the fun begins. The fun begins, okay? Now, Another thing that I need to mention here, 
if you're a father yourself or even a mother, then you know about uh, postpartum, what is it? Postpartum depression or something like that. Um, basically, it's just because after you receive the baby, like you don't have a, like a lot of time for yourself. You have someone who is dependent on you. And um, yeah, in general, many new mothers get like into almost like a depressive state. And yeah, it's, it's just like a, a, a normal thing that happens to a lot of women, right? This also happened uh, to us, to Gabriela. And um, because also of the heavy fights we had all the time, our mental health declined. We had a lot of arguments, also a lot of heavy arguments. Not really something I want to think about. It was a really, really hard time for everyone. But I mean, we had Lara and, and uh, she kept us going and uh, we find pleasure. But it was a hard time. And we tried hard, we, we kept going, it was a very, very difficult circumstance, but we fought for it, okay? We fought for it. Some more things that bothered me in Brazil were politics, the reliability, I said before, like when you ask someone to meet at uh, 8 a.m. in the morning and they show up at 10, happened to me. The co-working space this happens and it's somehow tolerated it's somehow tolerated which i totally don't understand but anyway again different culture um the security many times if i was on the on the playground with lara my daughter then i would see a policeman in you know they're not just like people in uniform, but they literally have like all kinds of weapons on them and, and it's scary just to see that. Then of course the education, it's a bit different than Switzerland and in, in Switzerland we obviously have the free education so you don't pay for regular school. In Brazil you do, at least for the good ones, for the private ones. And um, yeah, those things, Gabriel saw us well when we visited Switzerland for vacation. She realized all that, she noticed the differences and the benefits of Switzerland. And um, yeah, so we decided to move to Switzerland. Which we then did in 2021, yeah, beginning of 2021 after COVID we moved to Switzerland. Um, before that, obviously, we would make use of, of living in Brazil. We would travel a lot. Um, the, we would go also one time just by ourselves. So Gabriel and I, um, we went on a five day guided road trip, kind of a safari, which, which scares me. Like the, the thought of a safari or not being you know, I'm, I, I like a little bit of luxury. I like a clean hotel. I, I like also planning. I like to know what to do. And like safari or this road trip, you don't have any idea what's going on. You don't know where you're driving, what you're going to eat. You don't know whether you have time for, for anything. And this scared me, but really convinced me. It turned out to be the best vacation of my entire life. <laughs> and um, I used this opportunity as we as it was only the two of us without our baby that um, yeah I I uh, asked her um, out in the dunes it was just me and her and our tour guide and she said yes it was a very beautiful moment luckily I have everything on on tape on it's even on my YouTube go and check it out like it's <laughs> just like running through my mind right now what what happened there and 
I don't want to cry. So <laughs> good. Um, let's move on. Um, so she was then my fiance, and we would eventually move to Switzerland in early 2021 after COVID. The move was very hectic. Uh, I had like a lot of luggage and then looking after all the luggage plus having the, the baby on a 12 hour flight isn't easy either. Once we arrived here in Switzerland, we just wanted to sleep and take a break, but we did it. We came here and here we are. Here we are in Switzerland where it's cold and no longer sunny and warm. But here we are, things are good. I work full time as an online fitness coach, help people all over the world to lose fat, gain muscle, get in shape. Gabriela works as an assistant in an elderly home. Um, mental health, I would say is much better. We have more structure, we have good support from my family. My parents can take care of Lara two days a week. Uh, sometimes she goes to the kindergarten. Things are good. Things are good. It's not the same. And again, I could do another episode about the differences of Brazil versus Switzerland. What bothers me the most here is probably the weather because it's just like pretty cold right now. And in Brazil, I enjoyed the sun a lot. Things are also more expensive here in Switzerland, much more expensive actually. But um, yeah, things are good. Shouldn't complain. Things are good. And it's now October. So we've been living here for eight months. We like Switzerland, whether we ever move back to Brazil or not, we don't know yet. We committed to staying at least one year here in Switzerland, and then we will reevaluate and see how we like Switzerland, how it's going. Um, and then we go from there. That's our plan. Now, even though I say things are good, can I say that we made it? No. I mean, it's far from perfect. I just want to say it. it's far from perfect. We still have our issues. We'll probably always have our issues. We have like those arguments, but we just keep fighting, fighting for each other, hopefully not against each other. No, like it's still tough. I'm not saying everything is fine. I'm not saying uh, our, our problems are solved and what I addressed before with mental health problems, with uh, depression and so on. It's a process that requires a lot of time, a lot of energy, but we're improving. And um, yeah, who knows what the future holds for us, right? So to sum this up here, the, our story in two or three sentences, we met each other in Brazil through Tinder, fell in love immediately, visited each other in Switzerland and in Brazil, expected a baby, then decided to move together, take responsibility. Okay, I'm now like how many <laughs> sentences or words in? <laughs> but um, yeah, raised her in, in Brazil for the first three years and now we are in Switzerland. So from a swipe to the right on Tinder or is it to the left? I'm not sure, to having a baby, to moving to Brazil, it's a journey. It's obviously just a short version and I could tell much more. Um, because as said, it's complicated and there are so many things to be said, to be addressed. And 
anyway, you know my story now. You know the truth, how we met, how we got father, why we were in Brazil, why we're now in Switzerland. And yeah, I hope you found this story somehow inspiring as it shows that everything is possible. The things that you believe that are crazy and the things that you believe are never going to happen, they can become true. Also, what my story shows is that adversity or what you consider as adversity, in my case, it's the message of the baby, can be turned into an opportunity and fulfill your dreams. Again, because of her, I could move together with Gabriela. Because of my daughter, I also could live in Brazil for three years, which was always the dream of mine too. So two of my dreams came true. And no, obviously it was not <laughs> planned this way. Okay, this sounded now weird. Um, but what I want to say is really take such messages, adversity, obstacles, see them as opportunity, like in my case, never in my life, never in my life. I was so shocked, so anxious, so scared, like when I received the message. And now I can say that it was the best thing that could ever have happened to me.